Hey everyone, it's Nikki and welcome back to another Furry Reviews video. Today I'm going to be talking about the French film Ernest and Celestine. Ernest and Celestine was directed by, and I apologize if I pronounce these names wrong, Stéphane Aubier, Vincent Pitard, and Benjamin Renner. The screenplay was written by Daniel Pinnock, based on an original story by Gabrielle Vincent, and it was animated by the studio Les Armatures. It is a 2D animated film, and it was released December 12th, 2012. Ernest and Celestine is set in a world where there is the society of mice and the society of bears that that live side by side, but each society is afraid of the other. The bears are afraid of the mice, and the mice are afraid of the bears, and neither of them like each other or want to coexist. Just so you know, there are gonna be some spoilers. I don't think it really spoils the plot too much, but there will be spoilers in this video. So before I started talking about the technical elements of this film, I wanted to first highlight some of my favorite parts or aspects of it. And so the first thing I wanted to mention is just everything about the art style in this film. This film looks beautiful. It's animated in flash, which is pretty incredible if you think about it. And just the techniques used in the art style for both the character animations and the backgrounds are just really pleasant to look at. And this film is just so well animated and so good looking and I love it. <laughs> then there's the very beginning of the movie. There's this scene in an orphanage, which reminds me a lot of Madeline, which I'll get into at the end of this video. But there's a scene in the orphanage of all these little mice being told a story by the um, governess. I'm not exactly sure what that person is called about the big bad bears, but she loses a tooth and becomes indecipherable and it winds up that the girls start a pillow fight and it was a very cute scene. There's this bear couple that's, or bear family rather, that's highlighted throughout the film that Ernest and Celestine keep messing with in unintentionally and intentionally. The husband runs a candy shop where he sells sweets to little children and the wife is a dentist who ends up having to cure all these children of their cavities that they got at the husband's shop. So I really liked that kind of racketeering scheme that these parents had going on. So when Ernest first finds Celestine, she's asleep in a trash can and being hungry, his first instinct is to try to eat her, only for her to wake up and lecture him on why he shouldn't eat things out of the garbage, which I thought was a very cute meeting moment, but also just like showing off their different personalities. Another scene I really liked is where, so Celestine has been behind on collecting teeth for the mouse dentist that she works for, which they collect teeth from the bears based on like kind of a tooth fairy type fairy tale in Europe. And in order to compensate for the fact that she's fallen behind, she ends up stealing a bunch of teeth from the dentist bear. And the looks on all of the dentist's faces when she brings this huge sack of teeth into the dental hospital is just absolutely hilarious. This is an animation technique that director talked about when he discussed how they animated this film. But the Belize mice, rather than like animating every individual little mouse, they form this giant blob when they chase Ernest and Celestine. And I know it was like kind of a time and cost saving decision, but I really like how it looked and I really like the, how, how they chose to do that type of animation. Speaking of the police mice, there's a scene where they end up briefly in the bear town because they go through a sewer grate and end up on the street. And just the interactions between the mice police and the bear police, they're very much working together to try and catch Ernest and Celestine, but once they realize who they're working with, they like disperse. And it just shows how silly the hatred that the two groups of animal have for each other is. So while they're on the lam, Ernest and Celestine kind of hide in this little cabin and the two of them end up bonding over their artistic pursuits and being rejected by their family or their society for wanting to be artists and following their dreams. Celestine, like I mentioned in the introduction, she loves drawing, she loves art, but she kind of has to be a dentist in order to make ends meet in her little mouse world. And Ernest comes from a long line of lawyers and his family wanted him to be a lawyer, but he's passionate about music. So he took a different career path. And I just really liked them bonding over their shared interests in art. When the police finally catch up to Ernest and Celestine, Celestine tries to pass herself off as a bear cub. She has this little like paper bear mask and it just fails miserably. And it was very cute and very funny. <laughs> then when Ernest and Celestine are dragged off to the mice and bear courts respectively. Neither the, they're not really the jury, but neither the audience of mice or bears in either courtroom can articulate exactly why they fear or hate the other. And once again, I thought that was just really illustrative of the 
kind of stupidity of the rivalry or the hatred that the two groups have for each other. And finally, there are the parallels between the mouse judge and the bear judge as their respective courthouses go up in flames. There's one animation, it's like a smear or something where literally the mouse judge turns into the bear judge and I thought that would scene was just really well done. All right, and so now I'm going to move on to the more technical elements of this film, which include the storytelling and writing, the art style and character design, the setting and world building, the performances, and the sound and music. Storytelling and writing. I thought that the story behind this film was very cute and unique. I wasn't really familiar with the kind of little mouse myth from parts of Europe, which like I mentioned earlier, is kind of the European equivalent of the tooth fairy. So I thought that incorporating that myth into the world building of an underground mouse society, paralleling an above ground bear one was really a unique concept. I also really liked the characterization of all the main characters and their development throughout the story, particularly the relationship between the titular characters. Art style and character design. The art direction and animation in this film is wonderful. I watched a video about how the animators made this film with a combination of watercolor style backgrounds and flash, and I, along with all the commenters on this video, was astonished. This is just hands down the best looking flash animation I've ever seen. As for the characters, they are all very charming and they kind of remind me of like Toonie or Beatrix Potter characters, if that makes any sense. One thing I did notice that I thought was an interesting aspect of the animation and character design of this film was the fluctuating size of Celestine. In some scenes, she's tiny. She's small enough to fit in Ernest's mouth, for example, whereas other scenes, she's almost big enough to pass as a bear toddler. Like I said, she tries to actually pass as a bear toddler with a little mask. But I don't think that these discrepancies in size take away from the film. It's just, I was just making an observation about how you would kind of get away with these sort of cheats in 2D animation that might be more difficult in 3D animation or other media. Setting and world building. The decision to limit the anthropomorphic species to bears and mice was a really unique and interesting decision to me. I feel like there's a lot of media where there are animals of similar size, like there's a bunch of rodents or kind of like small forest critters or there's a bunch of canines or even like cats and dogs, for instance, as like antagonistic forces. So picking these two species and developing this kind of symbiotic relationship between their societies was a unique choice. I love the little mouse world. Miniature stuff like in The Rescuers or The Secret World of Arietti really gets me going. <laughs> no, the bear world is basically the human world, but with bears. I really liked the rural European setting that this town kind of takes place in performances. I listened to the original French dub and I found the voice acting of all the characters, particularly Celestine, to be very well cast and charming. The mice are cute with little high-pitched voices, but not to the point where it's annoying. And the bears kind of have more normal human voices with a more baritone or alto slant. Sound and music. The soundtrack throughout this film is delightful, along with the whimsical use of sound effects. It definitely has a specific like French vibe that I don't really see in American animation. Definitely gives like triplets of Belleville vibes or that kind of style of music if you know what I'm talking about. So before I started talking about my final thoughts on this film, I wanted to kind of compare it with other media. So I would say that this film probably has the youngest intended audience of all of the films and media that I've reviewed so far. While other stuff I've reviewed definitely has like a young audience, this really seems like little kids, but it can be appreciated for its artistic value by anybody. So in terms of things that this film reminded me of or that I wanted to compare it to, I really thought, first of all, of Madeline. Maybe it's just because I'm American in my pool of French media is small, but especially the fact that they had all the little orphans lined up in two sets of beds really gave me Madeline vibes at the beginning of the film. It also reminded me of The Fox and the Hound in that it's about this relationship between these two animals who shouldn't get along when society is trying to tear them apart, but they become friends. Like The Fox and the Hound, the kind of core tenet of this film is to try and overcome those societally placed limitations on friendship but with Ernest and Celestine, it's really more about this kind of overarching society, whereas with The Fox and the Hound, it's really just about the two main characters. Then there's Fantastic Mr. Fox. I feel like since Fantastic Mr. Fox is based on a Roald Dahl book, and this is also based on a children's book series in France, that 
they kind of have similar storytelling structures because of their intended audience. I do think that Fantastic Mr. Fox, while it is aimed at a young audience, it really, there really is some like adult, not adult humor, like anything particularly raunchy, but it really does have that kind of witty sense of humor that I think a lot of adults can enjoy. Whereas Ernesto Celestine, like I said, for the artistic value that this film has, it's certainly enjoyable to adults, but it's really just a sweet kind of fluffy, cute story without a lot of adult style humor. So my final thoughts on this film are that it is a beautiful and sweet film that should not have lost to Frozen of all things at the Oscars. Sorry to my friend who likes Frozen, but it just doesn't compare. This film is a work of art. <laughs> anyway, I highly recommend you check out Ernest and Celestine. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!